Hey everyone, Mike here with Prehistoric Magazine, and if you're watching, really appreciate the support for this channel. Now, some of you may or may not know, but I write prehistoric thriller books, and I also publish Prehistoric Magazine three times per year. And if you're interested in this type of stuff, dinosaurs and monsters and animals of prehistory, I encourage you to not only sign up for Prehistoric Magazine completely free in the description section down below, but to also think about joining the Prehistoric Magazine Council. Now, what is that? Basically, it's a small council of people that receive an email from me several times per year, and I send them the potential topics that I'm going to write about in the upcoming issue of Prehistoric Magazine. They give me feedback, and occasionally we meet up online on Zoom, but mostly it's more of an email thing where I'm looking for feedback. I'm looking to see what articles sparked people's interest what articles might not be of interest. So it's completely free. Again, it's a small council of people, Prehistoric Magazine Council, receive an email a few times per year from me just looking for feedback. I also send the members of that council, I also send them my prehistoric thriller books that I write. I send them free chapters and samples before the books are in fact published. So as I'm writing my next prehistoric thriller books, I usually send those out to those people on the council, curious what they think, or maybe even just if they find a certain chapter that I'm written or I'm writing interesting. So nonetheless, Prehistoric Magazine Council down in the comment section down below. Let me know if you'd like to join. Could Quetzalcoatlus intimidate a T-Rex? Now, this is kind of a fascinating topic, and I've been thinking about it for quite some time. If you watched Prehistoric Planet Season 2 almost about a year ago, hard to imagine it was a year ago, we are greeted to what is quite an incredible scene, the idea of one of the largest flying animals ever intimidating probably what is the largest terrestrial predator of all time. T-Rex is always trying to be dethroned, but as of right now, that is probably the largest terrestrial predator of all time. So the idea that a flyer, and don't get me wrong, it was a terrifying animal, Quetzalcoatlus, could intimidate T-Rex. Could it do it? Not really certain. Um, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments section down below at the end of this video. And in doing a bit of research for this video and asking around on Twitter, you know, obviously the answer is we don't know. We cannot go back in time. Unfortunately, Prehistoric Planet, I guess I say unfortunately, although I am grateful for Prehistoric Planet, don't get me wrong, it is phenomenal. It is as close as we can get to living, breathing dinosaurs. But unfortunately, Prehistoric Planet is all we're going to get as far as seeing a Quetzalcoatlus intimidate a T-Rex or two of them like we got to see in season two. So, but nonetheless, could Quetzalcoatlus intimidate T-Rex and boss it around? Now, in the real world, there are examples of small animals fending off bigger animals. You know, badgers are fierce animals. Also, small dogs. In, again, in doing a bit of research for this, you know, people are always wondering, why are small dogs so feisty? Well, it's because they have to be fearful. You know, they're not as big as a bigger dog. You know, a lot of times a bigger dog walks around knowing that it's big and not having to be so feisty. But a smaller dog knows that it's smaller and it's just going to be feistier. It's always going to be on the lookout, always looking over its shoulder for something probably coming at it. So now if we look at Quetzalcoatlus and we look at T-Rex, T-Rex stands about 13 feet tall at the hip. Who knows, maybe it could have got a little bit bigger. So when it raises its head, if it really stands all the way upright, maybe the head would have been 15, 16 feet above the ground. That's an enormous height. Roughly 40 feet long, about 20,000 pounds. Now Quetzalcoatlus, on the other hand, about 16 feet tall, roughly a 40 foot wingspan, and anywhere from 450 to 550 pounds. So let's call it a 500 pound animal. So, you know, when we consider which animal is bigger or, or people as well, when we consider size, we usually go by what weighs more. Now, Quetzalcoatlus weighing 500 pounds, if you think about it, 500 pounds versus something that weighs 20,000 pounds almost seems comical like it's not bound to be, <laughs> or it couldn't happen. You know, 500 pounds is a very large human being. 
a really large human being up against a T-Rex, that just doesn't seem possible. But again, if we look at those dimensions, you know, we can begin to even make an educated guess whether the scene in Prehistoric Planet Season 2 could have in fact happened. Could Quetzalcoatlus boss a T-Rex around? Could two of them? Now again, 500 pounds versus 20,000 pounds, it really doesn't seem possible. Although the head is huge and the beak is extremely dangerous. Like they said, T-Rex could lose an eye. But I'm actually here today to pose a little bit of a different a little bit of a different way to look at things. Now, when T-Rex is there and it's eyeing this Quetzalcoatlus, it's looking at an animal that is either looking at eye to eye or probably looking down on it a little bit. You know, Quetzalcoatlus stood about 16 feet tall. So at bare minimum, these two animals are staring eye to eye from whatever distance apart they are. And I think that Quetzalcoatlus may have been even a few feet taller than T-Rex. So think about if you're T-Rex, there's not many, there are some, there are not many animals in your environment that are going to be looking down at you. So right off the bat, that probably is intimidating. Okay, I want to repeat that again. If T-Rex is looking over at an animal with a giant head, it is going to potentially maybe think twice because it's not used to seeing an animal looking down on it. Now, the other part of the equation that, again, here is the most important part of this video, your comments. I'm curious to think what you think of this. But does T-Rex know how much Quetzalcoatlus weighs? Or does it know how much more it weighs than Quetzalcoatlus? You know, if it's going to eye this thing, it's going to see a thing with a giant head, as big as a human being, massive head, and standing 16 feet tall, with a 40-foot wingspan. Now, when it sees all this together, does it register that it is way more massive than it? Or does it view it as simply something that's as big as it? That's really the million-dollar question to this. Could Quetzalcoatlus intimidate T-Rex? I think it all boils down to, is T-Rex going to be able to size this animal up and say, I got you. I outweigh you by 19,500 pounds. I don't necessarily know the answer. None of us do. These are all educated guesses, but it's an interesting food for thought. Nonetheless, does T-Rex know how much Quetzalcoatlus weighs or how much of a weight advantage it has over it? Because obviously, I mean, think about that for a sec. It weighs 19,500 pounds more than Quetzalcoatlus, but I don't necessarily, my own opinion is, I don't necessarily know that T-Rex knows how big it is compared to this animal. Maybe it looks over at Quetzalcoatlus and sees this enormous figure with a giant head standing as tall, if not taller than it, with these enormous wings clipped beneath its side as it's standing there, maybe even walking, and it doesn't necessarily register weight. It doesn't necessarily know that this animal is extremely lighter than it. Brings me to the most important part of the video, your comments, love to hear them, really wanna hear them in regards to this topic. Could Quetzalcoatlus intimidate T-Rex? Thanks for all the support on this channel. See you in the next video.